The 2010s, what are they? You know what? Uh, the 2010s are almost over, so I thought it'd be a great time to d d detail my 10 best games of the 10s. The best 10 of the 10s, that's what I'm doing right here, right now. Let's go, starting with number... Why am I out of breath? God, I'm so fat. We're gonna actually start with three kind of runner-up categories. Uh, these are ca games that I really enjoyed from the last 10 years, but uh, they, you know, they didn't fit into my top 10, but I also wanted to give them a shout out because of certain aspects of them that I really enjoyed that I think needed to be highlighted. So we're gonna start with this category, which is uh, craziest game I played in the last 10 years. Now, there's a lot of crazy games, a lot of games was just like, what the fuck is going on? What's happening? Uh, but, you know, some of them, you say that and it's not a good game. And then some of that, some of them you, you say, uh, this is insane and also this is really fun. So the award for craziest game I played in the last 10 years goes to Driver San Francisco. This is a last gen game that released in 2011 based on the driver series of games. The, the storyline of this game is insane. Firstly, like the driver games, fairly down to earth and uh, realistic, if you want to use that. They're not realistic in every sense of the word, like the driving physics aren't uh, the most realistic. But story wise, they, they stay fairly grounded and, and real. All of that shit went out the window. They still use the same characters from the the other driver games, Tenor, uh, he's, the, he's the main character, he's a, he's a cop who goes undercover. But what happens in this game, mm, basically the beginning of the game, uh, he gets into an accident and goes into a coma. And then you proceed to play a campaign about a, a dude in a coma who's basically just imagining uh, chasing down a bad guy. That's basically the plot of the game. You're, you're a tenor and you're chasing down the, this bad guy. And you go through a bunch of missions to do it, but none of it's real. <laughs> you're in a coma the whole game. Everything is, is imagined by the main character, so much so that the, the final boss fight in this game, there is a boss fight in this game with cars that is, absolutely insane and that's all i'll say about it because you know maybe you can get a copy and, and play it for yourself but <sighs> driver san francisco is so fucking good and it's insane it's uh, the cra it's the craziest game of the last 10 years by far in my opinion of course this is all my opinion maybe you know a crazier game let me know in the comments my next category is most influential game of the last 10 years and you know this is really the most influential game of the last like three years i mean the the industry is in a place now where it's, there was a game today that announced a battle royale mode and i don't think that would have happened without the winner of this category, most influential game of the last decade, uh, Player Unknown's Battleground. Now, don't fucking at me. I know PUBG wasn't the first Battle Royale game. Okay, everyone knows that. But it took that concept and it made a fucking a phenomenon. It made a phenomenon that so many companies are now imitating or, you know, expanding on. And, Forza Horizon 4 now has a battle royale mode. What the fuck? You, you can say that you don't like PUBG. You can not like that game, but <laughs> you can't say it wasn't influential in where the industry is now. Um, yeah, I, I don't even need to say any more, I don't think. It's, uh, PUBG is the most influential game of the past 10 years, without question. Now, another thing that was influential the last 10 years is VR. VR's come a long way. Uh, it's made a resurgence, you know, obviously, you know, in the 90s, it sort of attempted to become a thing and then it just faded away and no one gave a shit about it. VR now is, is better than it's ever been. Uh, it's crazy how many VR games are 
there are, and also how many VR headsets there are. And, you know, when it comes to games, I, um, you know, I've played a fair amount of VR games. So, winner of best VR experience of the past decade goes to Thumper. I'm a sucker for uh, rhythm games and... <sighs> it's hard. It's a hard game. It's very difficult, but it's so worth it. And, you know, you're, you're just you're guiding this thing down a track and you need to press the buttons at the right time to turn corners and um, hit markers and stuff. You know, the, the gameplay is, you know, basic in concept, but uh, it's very difficult. The timing windows on, on those things are very small. And when you're in VR, uh, everything looks huge and you get these big, like, they have boss fights, basically, these big, like, heads that come up and, like, look over you like this, and you're, like, going towards them, and they're, like, throwing shit out at you from their mouths or something. It's crazy. It's, a, it's, um, it's, it's such an experience, and you can play without VR, and it's fine. But when you're in it, v in VR, uh, it's, it's a whole nother level, and, um, yeah. Best VR experience goes to Thumper for me. So that's my runner-up awards. What do you think of those categories? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Now let's move on to the 10 best games of the decade as voted by me. And I know you're going to disagree with uh, pr probably a few of these. <laughs> but it's my list, so fuck you. Now when it comes to my 10 best games of the decade, much like the categories I just did, these are, these are my favorite games. They're not necessarily the highest quality games. They're not necessarily, you know, what people would call the best games, typically. But these are games that I played and I enjoyed so much that I kept playing them and I would keep coming back to them. And uh, these, are, these are just my favorite games of the past decade. Now that that's out of the way, let me get to number 10, Just Cause 2. Just Cause 2, what can I say about it? It, uh, it took open world physics to the next level, giving you a rope that you could attach to two different things and then get, carry shit around. You could attach a, a, one plane to another plane and then fly off in one plane while the other plane's attached to it. And, but you know, because the other plane's so heavy, you're, the plane you're flying just fucking crashes. You get to ride a rocket. It's, story-wise, it's, it's whatever. The story doesn't matter in that game. And what matters is just running around that open world and, and really just doing whatever you want. I would load up that game just to, uh, just to fuck around. And I'd put on a podcast or music, whatever, and I'd just run around and cause as much chaos as I could. And that was the game for me. And I'd attempt to, to um, regain the points from the enemy, like the, the, where they are, the strongholds. I'd regain the strongholds from the enemy. And that just required blowing up all the red shit. <laughs> if it was red, blow it up and then you'll, you'll get it back. It's so good. It's such a shame that three and four didn't come anywhere near being as good as that game was. But you know, it is what it is. My ninth most favorite game of the decade now is Alan Wake. Now this is one where the story actually uh, did matter. It wasn't a great story, but when you took the story elements and uh, applied them to the gameplay. Uh, it just made for a very memorable experience. The gameplay was inventive, like it was a shooter, mostly. But adding in the, the torch and having to use light in a way that would sort of weaken the enemy and then you can shoot to kill it, it was very inventive. And Remedy, the combat's generally pretty good, in most of their games, you know, we won't talk about Quantum Break, but Control just came out this year and it's fucking amazing. The combat in that game is fantastic. And, you know, Alan Wake, I wouldn't say, okay, maybe, maybe Alan Wake isn't as good as Control from a combat standpoint, but it's still extremely good. And if you're into like Stephen King, Twin Peaks, anything like that, it, it has a, like a great 
atmosphere and uh, it's just uh, yeah it's very good very good it's like some would call it the ninth best game of the decade number eight doom man what a fucking great game that was thanks to activision i stopped giving a shit about first person shooters i wasn't into them anymore uh, fuck that shit uh halo who gives a fuck i don't fucking fuck first person shooters these days but doom that's just some shit I could get behind. Reloading? What the fuck's that? Fuck reloading. Just get a gun and shoot it. Run around at crazy pace. Shooting stupid dumb demon things. That's a first person shooter right there. That's where, that's where the original Doom started. Run around, shoot some shit. But now fucking Activision and shit comes in and oh, let's make it the most realistic video game ever. Fuck off. I want to run around, shoot demons listening to some heavy metal awesomeness. Doom gave me that. Doom reignited my love for the first person shooter. Love you Doom. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, number seven, my seventh favorite game of the decade, Mario Galaxy 2. I have wild and varied tastes. First Mario Galaxy, great. It's great fun. Go to all these different little planets and collect shit. Mario Galaxy 2, more of the same but they refined it. They took what was great about the first Mario Galaxy and they made it even better. Just top-notch platforming. Some may say Mario Odyssey is the best Mario 3D game of the past decade. They'd be wrong, because Mario Galaxy 2 exists. And you know what Mario Galaxy 2 doesn't have? New Donk City, which is the dumbest fucking bullshit Mario bullshit that's ever bullshitted, okay? New Donk, I'm just telling you the truth here, New Donk City is terrible. Not only is it the least imaginative land ever fucking put in a Mario game, it's boring as fuck. Mario Galaxy 2 is nowhere near as boring because it's fun and imaginative. Number six, my sixth favorite game of the decade. Uh, oh my God, we're almost halfway. Red Dead Redemption, the story, the open world, the lack of boringness. That's what made Red Dead Redemption so much better than Red Dead Redemption 2. I cared about the character of James Marsden. I cared about his family. I cared about that world and the people you met along the way. The gameplay was fun. It was a fun world to be in. And then they sucked all the fun out and gave you Red Dead Redemption 2. No thank you. Take it back. I don't want it. Give me Red Dead Redemption 3. Inject some fun in it. Just like the original Red Dead Redemption. Here we go, my top five favorite games of the past 10 years. Number five. The Witness. Uh, one of the best experiences I've ever had with a video game where they don't give you any direction. They literally don't tell you anything about how to play the game in the game with words. You learn everything through doing. The first puzzle you do in that game gives you the basic idea to play the rest of the game. And in every new section of puzzles you reach, you do the first one, you get the idea, you do the second one, it fucks with the idea you originally had, you do the third one, you understand. And they just get increasingly harder as you go. And then it flips it again, and you realize there's more to this world than just these puzzle screens. The whole world is a puzzle that you need to solve. Everything is where it is for a reason, and it's one of the, the most well-made games ever. It is incredible. Number four, The Last of Us. This was such a conflicting game for me when I was playing it. It wasn't until after I was finished that I appreciated it, and I mean, when I was like that final cutscene, I was like, okay, I get to soak it all in now. I've, I've, I've seen everything. Now I get it. And it, but it wasn't until the end. And it was a slog for me at times uh, because it's so depressing. <laughs> it really is. But that's, it's, it, it, is, it is art. They may try to tell us that video games aren't art, but you know, show them The Last of Us and The Witness. And um, you can't tell me the video games aren't art. 
they tell a fantastic story from beginning to end. Uh, the gameplay is satisfying. The, the enemies uh, feel like a real threat. And Joel's an asshole. He's an asshole throughout that whole game. And uh, at the end, when he makes uh, one final decision, I, I really wanted to ch choose a different thing, but they don't let you because they're telling a story and they, they need you to know Joel's a real fucking asshole. Maybe he isn't. And that's, that's the conflict. That's the conflict with that character is that, you know, he's an asshole, but he's also very much not. The Last of Us is fucking great. What a great game. Number three, Bioshock Infinite is my third favorite game of the last 10 years. I feel like when this game came out and people played it, they enjoyed it, and then over time, they've thought too much about it, and it's become uh, not, as, not as good to some people. But I still fucking love this game. Again, story, top to bottom, it's fantastic. I really love the characters of Booker and Elizabeth, and then that ending is... You know, you don't get to play too much of that ending. There's like a half hour basic like cut scene that you can control. But man, that ending. So good and it, it completely blows open what Bioshock is. And it also mind fucks you because the fucking, the title of the game is Bioshock Infinite. And you think that's just a fucking funny name. That's just like a weird name that you've given it. And it's not until the... The last scene of the game finishes and they show you the name of the game that you go, motherfuckers. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You got me. Again, the gameplay is great and, you know, I really feel that's one game where the, the gameplay is just there so you can get through the story. But uh, it's still fun to play and what a fucking story. It's great. My second favorite game of the past 10 years is Portal 2. I was so excited for this game before it came out. I, I bought into the fucking ARG bullshit that Steam had. I was so ready for this game because I was a fan of the first Portal and, and seeing them expand on the story of that game made me excited and, and knowing that it was gonna be a lot longer of a game compared to the first one. Yeah, I was really looking forward to it. And so they release it and I play it and it's, it's fucking great. It's still fucking great. I do feel there's a point where they're just extending the game just to extend the game. But the puzzles are still so good and the story is still so good that I, I, I don't feel bad putting it in second place as, as my second favorite game. And here we are. My number one most favoritest game of the past 10 years. Super fucking Meat Boy. That's not the official title, but it should be. Super Meat Boy is the perfect platformer. It's extremely challenging and extremely fun. And the controls are so perfect that if you fail, it's cause you're a fucking loser. It's not the game's fault. It's cause you fucking suck. And I appreciated that. I appreciated being a fucking loser up until I wasn't because I beat the game. I put in the time and the effort, replayed every level a million times, and I fucking beat it. And I got a little avatar thing on Xbox. That's, that's the best. It's the most rewarding feeling to beat a game that you fucking hate, but you also love it. Because I still play it. Even though it came out a decade ago, I just finished it on Switch again. I played it on PC. I played it on Xbox 360. I played it on PS4. The whole thing, every time, was amazing. It's such a well-made game. And that's the major thing, is it's just well-made. And it's fun to play. Even though you bang your head against the wall at times, it's still fun to play. I think that's the, the mark of a, of a good game. It may piss you off, but it's still fun. And that's why Super Meat Boy is number one for the past 10 years. Thank you for watching everyone. What, what are your thoughts on my list? Do you agree? Do you very highly n not agree at all? Let me know in the comments. My name's Aaron, this is Total Badness. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon for my top 10 games of 2019. Stay bad, I'll see you next time.